Okay, now in ZBrush land, we're going to do a few things. First off, I got to fix the screen resolution real quick for you. So I'm just going to do one of those and then do one of these, do one of these, and do one of those. There we go. Okay, so you probably didn't have to do that, but it's one of the things I had to do because I'm capturing at a weird resolution. So here, what I'm going to do is grab a 3D plane, click and drag it out, and hit Edit. Texture. I want to import the texture on my desktop called Part 1. Next, I want to make a Poly 3D. So that just made this into a Poly Mesh 3D instead of an actual uh, ZBrush primitive. Poly Mesh 3Ds, unlike poly ZBrush primitives, allow for UVs. So what I want to do is assign UV planar which is actually just taking a picture of this straight down and making a giant square out of it, which it is. So when I have that UV planer mapped out, I can now add a texture into it. So I can go to texture map and get the lines. I go over here to material and switch it over to a fast shader because it's just easier to see. And what I want to do is go into geometry and turn smooth off and divide this up to like 7. Depending on how slow your machine, you might, the farther you go on, the, the crisper it's going to get. Okay, so I'm going to choose 7. In subtools, I definitely want to take the opportunity now to clone this part. And then append it here. The reason I do this, I want to become, I want to make several parts, not just this one, and that original part. Okay, now I'm going to shut that one off and just deal with the one at hand. Okay, so for this one, what I want to do is take and delete lower at this point. I don't need any subdivisions. I do need that texture mounted over here, and I also need it to be made into an alpha. So we've got that texture everywhere. Once it's an alpha, what we can now do is mask it by alpha. So I want to mask by alpha. So everything black is now masked off. Well, here's a little button that says hide unmasked. Choose that. And now I get this part. Okay, now what I want to do is take and turn this into actual geometry. So what I'll do is take it and choose to, I can smooth out the edges if I wanted to. I can smooth the surface if I wanted to. I can add whatever thickness I want. I want a minimal thickness on this. And I'm just going to hit extract. Now what that's going to do is make me this. And what you could do with it is now turn off these. And now you see why filling in the black was very important in, in taking your time because now I have little tiny holes in here, which are no big deal, but uh, they could be. Let's go to the Move tool and see how this works. We can go to Transform, Activate Symmetry. And right now, because I took the time in Photoshop to line up these at both sides, they are mirrored, okay? Be in the right subtool for that. And I have to activate symmetry again. So they're mirrored and they should mirror their changes. If they did not mirror correctly, you can also set the pivot point and it will set that pivot point. Mine does not need that, so it'll goof it up. You can clear it by going into clear pivot point. 
So now you can do, you know, you can really go in here and you, if you want, you could shape this. What I would do is hold shift to absolutely snap it into the foreground. And I could shape this around if I wanted to. I can also sculpt on it, which is really nice. So I can use a standard brush. What's going to happen here is if I sculpt on it, however, you're going to get this on the other side. And you might not want that. So that's where you take advantage of the brush. And then in here, we have the ability to um, back face mask something. Okay, And that used to be right in here until they've given me the new 3.2. So auto masking, ah, back face right here. So now when I go to sculpt on it, you'll see no change on the other side. So I'll take the time to maybe go in here and do some nice deformations of this. Puff it out a little bit. I'm not too concerned about sculpting too much right now. Uh, it's all about puffing this up enough. And getting forms that should be on top of each other on top. So this is kind of like making your forms come to life and what needs to be on top of what. Does this need to be on top of this because it's a leg? Probably. So I'll just get it close. Is this tail? Where's that at? Well, the tail, there's probably like a little section right in here that attaches the tail into there. Again, not too concerned with it. There's probably a big forehead region somewhere in here. There's uh, definitely something that goes in there. And this mane just goes nuts.